All right, hi everybody. Um, for those of you, I know some of you here, but for those of you who I don't know, my name is Ashley. I um, just acknowledging the recording over here. Hang on. Um, I write about food and recipes at Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen, and I do a lot of programs with local libraries. Sorry, my camera's getting a little, a little wonky. Um, and today, uh, this is part of the Cook It Together series that we're doing with the Rye Free Reading Room. And um, today we're making a skillet lasagna. You can use uh, beef, I'm using ground turkey. You could use lamb, pork. You could use uh, vegan ground meat substitute. I'll show you my favorite in case you're interested. Um, my family, we eat meat and non-meat meals, but I like this um, Beyond Beef ground. If you're gonna try a plant-based, I find that this is the one that's kind of the most acceptable for people who also eat meat. Some of the other ones, they're fine. It's all a personal preference, but uh, I like to keep, I like to keep it on hand, swap it out every once in a while. Um, so I'm using ground turkey today, uh, and we're gonna make garlic bread while it's cooking. The great thing about this lasagna is that um, it's gonna cook in a skillet instead of boiling noodles and layering them with tomato sauce. Um, it's all gonna cook in a skillet, one pan, super easy. And then while that's cooking and we get our garlic bread going, we're also gonna make a salad dressing um, for those of you who want a salad alongside. Uh, and it's a creamy balsamic vinaigrette that if you have been to Capri and Austin, it's a pizzeria kind of near where I live. Um, they have this creamy Italian vinaigrette. It's so good. I like di dipping my pizza crust in there, the bread, it's and on salad, obviously. Um, it's a really good dressing and it holds up in the fridge for a few days if you wanna have it later. And last to note, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute. This is a very laid back class. Um, I welcome questions, even if they're not strictly related to the current recipe, that's totally fine. I'm here to answer and help. And I know Jojo probably did, but make sure if you're cooking long that you've washed your hands. That's like the very most important part. My son Ian is 10 and I, we always make sure because sometimes I forget to double check, but that's a good thing to double check. So, and if you're making the garlic bread, make sure your butter, your stick of butter is out of the fridge to get soft. Um, I have a little kind of hack that I do. I have uh, lighting underneath my, my counters, my cabinets here, and I stick it on top of something on my espresso machine just to kind of warm it up a little. But if yours is still kind of too firm, it's totally fine, we will make it work, we can melt it. There is a trick too, if you take a glass, this kind, this works all right, I think. You fill a glass with really hot water, you empty it and you put your butter on your cutting board. After the water's out of the glass, you can set it right on top like that and the residual heat from the glass, leave it sit for like 10, 15 minutes, helps to soften the butter. So I like trying different tricks like that. Sometimes they work, sometimes they're, internet lies, you never know, but they're fun to try out. So um, we're gonna start, you need a large, I'm using a large nonstick skillet. You want something that has a lid that fits on tight because the, we're gonna close it when it cooks later. But we're gonna take our skillet and we're gonna add, um, we're gonna, sorry, let's gonna put the meat in there, we're not doing that yet. We get a yellow mm -hmm. onion. Yes. Um, a quick question regarding yeah. your skillet. It's yeah. nonstick, is that correct? It's what? It's nonstick. Yeah, I, I, my largest skillet happens to be nonstick. I prefer to use that. I think this would be fine in a stick skillet, <laughs> in a, a, you know, a different type. I think um, that's just kind of the way I use it. There's nothing, it's not like cooking eggs or something that you really need to make sure there's a nonstick in there. Uh, the most important part is that it's very large and it has a tight fitting lid. So I'm just cut the ends off of the onions and I'm peeling the papery bits off. And if, I don't know, Jojo, if you have one of these, but let me see if I have one to show you. They make these really good kid chef knives it's called um, Curious Chef. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah. You have one? Have you used one? Oh, I should have known you're a professional over there. These are great though because they are plastic, they're serrated, so they actually do cut things, but they're safe. Some adults honestly could stand to use them in a lot of 
<laughs> what? It shoots up. So, What's up? No, we can't find it. I, all of our stuff. Oh, is okay. Well, well as long as you do things that your grown up is comfortable with you doing, and there's plenty of stuff that you can help with that doesn't involve knives if you don't have a knife that you're able to use right now. So we're just, I cut it into kind of strips. I'm just kind of dicing it small. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be even because um, it's going to cook down into the sauce. But we're just kind of small dicing in this. And this is one of those recipes if you have, if your onion's a little bigger, it doesn't matter. It's just about a small onion. If you have a really big onion, you can use half. So just cutting this into pieces. And then I'm going to scoot it to the side. We're going to grab a carrot. Um, if I'm going too fast or too slow, also let me know. I want you to be able, especially if you're cooking live with me, I want you to be able to keep up. Um, I'm going to drizzle about a tablespoon of olive oil in my skillet and put it on medium heat while I prep my carrot. I tend to not peel carrots because there's a lot of good nutrition in the in the skin. So if you have a little scrubby brush, you're just gonna run it under water and scrub it. If the peel's looking particularly funky, you can go ahead and um, peel it, that's fine. This is one of my son's very favorite meals. And we always say that it tastes better when we cook them, when we both cook them. Um, which is something tastes a little better when you're cooking with somebody that you care about and you get to eat together. Um, I scrubbed two carrots because I want to have a little bit for my salad also. So I just figured while I'm prepping it, might as well scrub them both. I'm going to stick this little one off to the side. The, um, the pizza place by my house, they do their salad with the dressing is cucumbers, tomatoes, mixed like spring mix and carrots. So figure since I have them, I'm gonna put them in there, but you can do whatever, whatever works, whatever you like in your salads. Um, the carrot I'm doing also just kind of chopping it. You want about a quarter cup of carrot, so it should be about one carrot. Some carrots are massive. It's okay if you have a little extra. Just cutting it into planks and then into little sticks and then going across. And these are going to go in at the same time as the onions and also a little bit of garlic. I had actually a very funny, I won't say incident, experience the other day. I was, I made the most garlicky recipe I've ever made in my life. And I, I married into an Italian family, so we eat a good amount of garlic, but I found this recipe um, and it had this sauce that had lots and lots of garlic in it. And after I ate it, I remember, I'm talking like 20, 20 cloves of garlic and then another three or four in the other part of the meal. And then I remembered I had a dental cleaning the next day. So I was like very much brushing my teeth extra because I did not want to torture this poor hygienist who was <laughs> cleaning my teeth the next day. But I managed, I had to brush a little extra, but it was worth it for a tasty meal. So got one onion, one carrot, and then three cloves of garlic. I'm just scooping everything up in this little care. I like this one because it has sides on it. So when I'm bringing stuff from the cutting board to my skillet, it doesn't fall off the edge, which is pretty nice. There's all sorts of tricks for peeling garlic, peeling the skin off of them. Um, you can take the side, the flat side of your knife and lay it on top of the garlic clove and very carefully so you're not touching the, the sharp part. Push down or, or hit it. How many, yeah. how many cloves did you use? I'm using three. If you, if you, yeah, I'm using three. If you feel adventurous, you could go more. If you're not as big into garlic, one is fine. Um, so I'm just peeling the skin off and then this is a little, my family, we call this the garlic cannoli because it looks like a little cannoli shaped wrapper, but it's just silicone. I think you can use if you have like a silicone pot holder or something like that too. But you put the garlic in there and you press down and you roll and the friction just 
just makes the skin feel right off. So that's that's the other way that I feel garlic. If it has, if your garlic has one of these like really, um, the light is showing that well, really what kind of woody little stems on there, you can trim that piece off. And then just mince those up. And then all three of those things are gonna go into our skillet that's heating over medium heat with the olive oil. I do a version of this lasagna with um, lamb, with ground lamb. And instead of basil at the end, I put on fresh mint, which is kind of nice. It's a little, a little change. Um, just swapping the protein and the herb can make something taste totally different, which is kind of fun. All right, so garlic, onion, and carrot. I'm gonna bring them over and put them into my hot oil. Get a little sizzle. It should be it should be warm, but not like crazy hot right now. We didn't put the heat up too high. And I'm just gonna stir it a little bit, and then we're gonna season with a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. If you're using a uh, table salt that's like the really fine grain use about half because the grains are a lot smaller, so it'll make it a little too salty, or it might make it too salty. Um, you can always add more salt, but you can't take it away. But kosher salt is this one that's got kind of bigger, so my light was acting up a little bit, a little bigger crystals than um, fine grain table salt. Let's go. Sprinkle that on. How much salt was there? I have a teaspoon. Have a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Did you get the recipe card with your when you registered, Lori? Yeah, but I didn't get a chance okay. to print it out, so I. Oh no problem. My fault. Okay, no, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that um, you had it if you needed it. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna we're gonna let that cook until it's soft. Every once in a while, we'll give it a little stir. It should take about five minutes, and you'll see the onions will start to get a little translucent, so you'll be able to kind of start seeing through them. And while that's sauteing, we're gonna take a little fresh rosemary. We're gonna need about a teaspoon total. So I'm thinking like one spray will be plenty. Um, and something I like doing if I need only a little bit of an herb like rosemary, sometimes I'll buy like this, um, the poultry blend. So this has thyme, sage and rosemary. That way I have some other herbs to do interesting things with and I don't have a huge portion of, of just the one herb, unless you can find some other recipes to use those. Um, and fresh rosemary, I bet Jojo will be good at doing this. If you hold, it's like a little tree branch kind of. If you see, you can see the leaves kind of grow upward. If you hold the thick part of the stem, you can kind of grab, hold the stem at the top and you pull and you slide your fingers down and you'll take the leaves right off. I bet you, you probably could do that, right? Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be better <laughs> already though. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah. So I'm just gonna pick any of the leaves that didn't come off. Usually at the top, you have to kind of pick them off by hand. I'm gonna mince that. And again, every couple minutes, I'll just give the, the onions a little stir. Um, Ashley, what is in the pot right now? Um, we have olive oil, garlic, onions, and carrots. Okay. So we're just letting it go a little, a little bit more. If it feels like it's taking, if it, they're not quite um, starting to get soft, you could turn the heat up a little bit on that. Um, and then once that is soft, um, we'll add our rosemary and this won't make it too hot, but if you're worried about spice, you can leave it out. I'm just gonna put in a pinch of red pepper flakes. So um, when you're buying them, sometimes you'll notice they're kind of gray. If you're able to find ones that are a little more bright red, they'll have a little bit more flavor. So when I'm gonna do my pinch, I'm just gonna grab a little pinch like that. It's probably like an eighth of a teaspoon. 
Um, if you like things a little spicier, you could add more. My onions are looking good. I'm gonna add my pinch of red pepper flakes. Pinch of red pepper flakes and my rosemary. And then it should, in about 30 seconds, it should start to smell like rosemary. Smell it from it hitting the heat. And that's when we're gonna put the meat in. So, depending on the packaging for your ground meat, something that, one of the, one of the things that I showed my son, uh, when you put it in, There's sometimes a little paper here, like a little plastic or wax paper. Make sure you take that off because that's not good <laughs> to eat and you don't want it to melt in there. Sometimes they kind of blend in with the meat and you don't necessarily see them. So just something to keep an eye out for. And once your meat is in the pan, you can use a wooden spoon or a spatula. I'm using this little meat chopper thing. That's kind of cool. I'll show you actually. My mom got this for me and I have like a stocking stuff over here. And I thought, I was like, eh, I don't think I'm probably gonna use it that much, but I really like it. So you can take it, it's got kind of like a star and you, it's heat proof or heat resistant up to a very high temperature and it just kind of breaks the meat up. So I'll sometimes do this for the first little bit while it's cooking and then I'll switch off to the wooden spoon. But just breaking the meat up, until it's in kind of small pieces. And then let it sit and get brown. And then depending on the type of meat you have, you might need to drain some of the grease once it starts um, cooking. And there are a couple ways you can do it. You can use, you can tilt your skillet to the side and use a little, uh, little spoon and ladle it out and put it into a heat proof bowl. My favorite way to do it, and I'll show you once, once some of the grease starts cooking out, I like to use a turkey baster. Um, it can be used for more than just turkey. And important that it has a heat proof tip. <laughs> I used to have one that was plastic and I melted it in a cast iron skillet years ago oh, and that no. was, <laughs> yeah. But, no. but lesson learned and my, my oopsie was able to help other people not make that mistake. So, for Jojo, in case, have you ever used, can I get a thumbs up? Have you ever used a turkey baster like this before? Thumbs up, thumbs down, no? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you all the secrets. i just kind of scoop my meat around in here. I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit to more like medium high. It's not, it's not like cooking too fast. Um, so when you're using a turkey baster and maybe have, I'm assuming that's your mom with you, yeah. Um, have her show first, if you're gonna use one of these, you wanna make sure before you put it into your liquid that you're gonna suck up, you squeeze it. It's kind of like a balloon, so you're deflating the balloon. And then you can set it down into the bowl and you slowly release it to suck up the juice. And then you find your heat proof container and you very slowly squeeze it, really slow, because this is hot and so you don't wanna burn yourself, but I'm pretty sure you get the hang of it. My son does it now. Um, it's pretty exciting. And if you, my other <laughs> tip, if you have a metal um, tube on your baster, it gets very hot when you're sucking up hot liquids. Don't touch this part, only touch the plastic or the uh, silicone up top. Good? <laughs> it sounds like a lot to remember, but once you're doing it, it's pretty easy. Like most things in the kitchen, I think you kind of get that, you get the hang of it. And kids learn super fast, so. That's no problem. So you can see my meat is still still pink. It's starting to brown, but I'm just kind of continuing to break it up. And whenever I don't know if this one's gonna have too much fat, I just kind of tilt it to the tilt it at an angle. And if there's fat it'll, or grease, it'll drain down here. Some meat isn't doesn't have as much um, depends on what you buy. And let's see. So after that, this is a really fun part. 
that we can work on while the meat is still browning. If you want, got our box of lasagna noodles. This brand, 10 is not half of the package. Usually 10 noodles is half of the package so I can make it twice with one box, but this one seems to have 19 noodles. I want you to count out 10 of these curly edge lasagna noodles from your box. You got, oh, look at that. And then we're gonna do something really fun with them, but only if you enjoy having fun in the kitchen, which I do. I'm gonna take a rubber band. See, let's, so I posted this on Instagram the other day and somebody was shocked. They never thought to use a rubber band. This one's not big enough. But you can use, depending on the size of your rubber band, you can use a rubber band to keep the box sealed. You have that like half opened container of pasta. And I'll save this for the next time I wanna make this recipe. Turn my meat around a little more, just trying to get all the parts that are pink to be brown. Um, again, depending on what, what type of meat you have. It'll be cooking more once the sauce is in there too, so it doesn't have to be completely, completely cooked through, but we're looking for kind of brown all the way around. So if you have your noodles, each noodle, we're gonna snap it into pieces. In each piece, you want maybe like two inches. It doesn't have to be exact, but maybe two inches long. So it's big, so it's uh, they're bite size. So if you put your thumbs to kind of close to each other and you push down and you get this little snap. So you have to snap all of your noodles into little pieces. Um, if you're going by the wavy part, you could count the waves if you wanted and do like every four or five waves. They don't have to be exactly the same size. That's just a rough guideline. I know somebody had asked uh, one of the librarians about um, gluten-free pasta. I haven't used gluten-free personally. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work as long as, at the cooking time, you might need to cook it a little bit more or less. You could kind of test the noodle a little earlier or later, depending. Um, but as long as they're the curly edge kind, so these are the kind that typically people would boil and then layer for lasagna. The other type of lasagna noodles are no boil noodles and those are just like sheets. And I don't have the fun curly edges. So they're the less fun, but usually easier type of lasagna noodles. Excuse me, can you hear me? Your board, yeah. is, your board is not exactly under the camera. Just overhead? Yeah. You're seeing both views? Yeah, the overhead, it's over to the side a little bit. It doesn't matter. I can okay. tell what you're um, I have it. It looks, to me, it looks like it's centered in the space. Okay. Is, it, is anybody else having a problem with it? Okay. Yeah, I, try, I, I have this uh, set up to try to give you the best angle I can. I can't, I can't zoom in on it or anything, though. Um, if you, if it is bothering you. I'm only seeing half of the board. You're only seeing half of this board? Um, yeah. The, is anybody else having that problem? Because if not, I think you might be zoomed in. Because I have, I can see on the screen, I can see all four corners. Okay. It's a square within a rectangle of my counter space. Maybe I'm or, zoomed. The yeah, board is zoomed. fine on my screen. OK. Yeah, I think maybe. Um, if you're zoomed in, are you seeing both of my cameras? You're seeing the one that's me in the front also? I see you fine. I see your red watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah, the red watch is right in the middle of my screen. Oh, so maybe the red watch is off to the side. So either. Here, maybe, it's my, it's, maybe it's my Zoom. Yeah, hang on. Let me try this real quick. Let me remove that spotlight and then I'll add it again and maybe that'll. Bump it back for you. Did that work? Pretty much the same. That's okay. Don't worry about it. I can right, still. Yeah, I'm, not sure. I'm sorry. It sounds like it might be something with your Zoom. Um, so I don't have any extra fat in my pan today. Um, but we're going to, so I'm going to go ahead and add these noodles straight into the pan on top of the meat. So it's going to look a little crazy because they're uncooked noodles, but. Hopefully, find throw throw them on right on top. 
I usually break these over the skillet, but I wanted to show you the breaking process. Sometimes you'll find like little teeny bits. You can throw those right in there too. Um, so I've got the lasagna noodles onto there, and then we're gonna add in a can of diced tomatoes, a uh, 28 ounce can, which is one of these big ones. I'm using crushed tomatoes this time. Um, I have ones that don't already have seasoning in them, so we're gonna add some seasoning. It's okay if yours does. Um, empty the entire can, including the juices, into the skillet. The only other thing I can think of, um, Charlene, I think that was you with the camera, is um, if you go up to the corner where it shows the view, if you toggle between maybe um, gallery view, speaker view, maybe if you can- I, I solved the problem. You did, you got it? Yeah, it was, uh, okay. the participant windows were covering part of- Ah, uh, okay. I was like, that, that would be a first for me, but you never know, technology's crazy if you like that. So much better now. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I was like, <laughs> what did I do? Um, then our other uh, thing that we're adding is tomato sauce. So that's a can, an eight ounce can. You can put that right on top also. And I'm not stirring this yet. Tomato, crushed or diced tomatoes, tomato sauce. And then I'm gonna add in a half a cup of either white wine, or you can use water, or you could use um, chicken broth if you wanted. I have, I opened a bottle of wine so that I could use it, and then I'll have some with it later. Um, with kids, if, uh, if you're concerned about the alcohol, it cooks out, so you don't need to be concerned, but if you don't want to use it, totally understandable, or if you just don't have it. So that's going right on top, or the water, the chicken stock. And then we're gonna put the lid on. Haven't stirred it. Lid's going on. I'm gonna put this back on the stove top. And I'm gonna set a timer for uh, 20 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. And I'm, I'm gonna reduce the heat down to medium low. So this will kind of, it'll start bubbling. The tomatoes will start cooking the pasta. And then every, like, five to 10 minutes, we'll go in and we'll stir it around so that any of the noodles that were sticking up kind of get incorporated, but um, much easier than layering it in a pan. How's it going over there, Joe? Can I get a thumbs up if it's going all right? Oh, phew. okay, good. <laughs> Quick question. Yeah. Can I use marinara instead of the tomato sauce? Absolutely. You could probably use marinara for all of it if you wanted and it would be fine, but yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and you let it cook for what? 20 minutes? 20 minutes? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to go for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, uh, like I was saying, if you're using a gluten-free noodle or something else, you might need to, when the 20 minutes are up, just grab one of the noodles and see if it, if it's cooked through. Um, so that's all there is to that. While that's cooking, I'm going to grate some Parmesan cheese. Um, if you have the already grated kind, that's also fine. Um, we need um, a quarter cup to go in the pasta, and then I always serve extra for on top. My son loves eating Parmesan, like loves, loves Parmesan, so I usually do extra, extra. And if you ever are interested in snacking on, on Parmesan, you can take the tip of a knife and kind of put it down in there and twist, and you get these little chunks. They're very tasty. So. <laughs> If, if you like Parmesan, it's a nice little snack or pop it on a cheese board. And I'm just using not the biggest side, but kind of the, not the smallest, but the medium. It doesn't really matter. I feel like you can kind of measure it with your heart. Uh, and this is something, if you haven't done this before, especially the kiddos, just go nice and slow and make sure you hold, you hold it with one hand so you hold it in place while you're and a slide in the parmesan down with the other hand. You could also, when you're going to serve this later, if you wanted to do something like that looked a little extra fancy on top, instead of braiding it, you can take a vegetable peeler and you could do little kind of big, 
big pieces like that, that will look really pretty for serving it. Um, sometimes it's just doing something a little bit different that'll make it seem a little more special. So my box grader has this little cup underneath it that shows measurements. So I know I have enough to go in my pasta, but I want to do a little bit extra. And if you want, you can also put some of this in with the butter for your garlic bread. Like the garlic parmesan bread, that's also delicious. All right. And I'm just going to leave parmesan out because I, I feel like my song probably won't recognize that even. But that's enough to get us started. All right. So it's been a couple minutes so far. I'm just going to clean up my board and then I'll give the pasta a stir. And again, when you're stirring it, we're just trying to kind of get the pieces that were sticking up out of the top. Any pasta that wasn't covered with sauce, trying to get it to tuck down under a little bit. So, holder. You can see, like, I just have a couple pieces that weren't fully submerged. So, when I stir it, see some steam starts to come up. Just kind of mixing those around. And right now, they're still going to be hard and uncooked. All right. Are you, oh, sorry, I see you're doing your tomatoes. Ooh, good pour. That was an outstanding pour. And it was like perfect on the camera. Very nice work, Joe. <laughs> what is that? It's a little play knife. Ah, very nice. And then our better knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wouldn't do that. Yeah. Are you, speaking of butter, are you ready to make some garlic butter? What do you think? Yeah. So you need a bowl and a stick of softened butter. If your butter is not soft, you can melt it. That's totally fine. You can brush the bread with melted butter. It's not a big deal. Um, and if you end up having more, depending on the size of your bread, if you end up having any of this garlic butter left, you can um, save it in a container in the fridge. It's great tossed in pasta. Um, you can smear it on a piece of toast. Um, it's that uh, you could put it a little bit on like some grilled chicken or steak would be nice. So I've got a stick, which is eight tablespoons of, um, I'm using unsalted butter. And we're going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. This is very garlicky garlic bread, but it's my favorite. If you're feeling a little garlic shy, you could go, you could start with a half a teaspoon. But I'm going to do a whole teaspoon. And then I like adding dried parsley. You could also do, um, if you have like a dried Italian seasoning blend, you could use that. Um, about two teaspoons of dried parsley. If you are a heat seeker, you could add some of those red pepper flakes in here. That would be nice. And I'm just stirring it until it's all mixed together. And then you can use any type of bread that you like. You can use a baguette, you can use sourdough, you can slice your bread, you can use, I'm using like hamburger buns, or like sandwich rolls. Um, I've done it on hot dog, like one time we had extra hot dog buns left from grilling and I turned some of those into garlic bread. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna grab, I have hamburger buns. I'm going to cut them all in half through the middle so that I've got a lot of surface area. Um, if you have a full loaf of bread, you can slice it through the middle also, or you can slice it into like half inch or inch wide kind of, uh, slices. And for this, you want to use a serrated knife. So that's the knife that's got the little teeth on the side of it. And those are, they let you saw without squishing your bread. They're actually, they're really good for slicing tomatoes also. So I'm just gonna slice each of these open. And you can cook these either, I'm gonna use my broiler today. Um, you can use a broiler or you can use a skillet. So if you were gonna do a skillet to cook 
cookies, you would, after the garlic butter is on, um, heat your pan, a nonstick skillet to um, medium heat, and you'd slather them and you put those, you would put the buttered side down in your skillet for like three minutes or so. And when you flip it and it's nice and golden, that's when it would be done. We're gonna broil ours. Um, well, I'm gonna broil, I don't know. What are you, do you know which one you're doing, Jojo? Broil. Broil, all right. So if you have an, oh, now that I'm over at the stove, let me stir my pasta again. See things starting to get a little softer there. Um, if you have an electric oven like me, can preheat your broiler to high and you'll leave have the rack all the way up right under the oven you want to leave the door cracked if you have a gas broiler or a gas oven you can close it because with an electric oven the heat will keep kicking if you close it it'll think it's hot enough it'll keep kicking off and on off and on it'll take longer to cook so by leaving it cracked open it'll stay on the whole time um, most ovens have like a little notch where it kind of stays cracked open on its own. If yours doesn't, I had somebody in the class once and theirs didn't, you can take a wooden spoon, don't use a plastic spoon, but a wooden spoon, and stick it right in here and just kind of close it and that'll leave it cracked open a tiny bit. I just want to check, did I forget? Oh, the oregano is for a salad dressing. I feel like I'm forgetting something here, but. That's for the salad dressing. All right. I asked you a question. Sorry. Yeah. Did you add the Parmesan and the wine to your mixture? The wine, yes. The Parmesan, we're gonna stir in later. If you already added it, it's fine. It's not gonna, yeah, it's not fine. Okay. So it, um, the noodles and then the tomato sauce, the crushed or diced tomatoes and the wine. And then close. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So I'm gonna take this garlic butter and just kind of do a thin layer on each piece of bread. And then I'm gonna put these all on a baking sheet. So this is this is a half sheet pan. They make quarter sheet pans that are half of this size. A full sheet pan is like way big and I think we'll have a, like a restaurant kitchen. Would you have room for something like that? But these, if you're doing it on a sheet pan, put the buttered side up. Um, I can tell you about, let's see, next month, let's see. next month we're going to do um, this program on April 20th. It's also a Wednesday at six o'clock. We're going to do breakfast for dinner. I'm a big fan of breakfast for dinner. Um, my family very much enjoys that also. I have a feeling Jojo might also like breakfast for dinner. Um, uh -huh. we're gonna make, yeah, yes. sounds good. Um, we're going to make hollow French toast and um, a strawberry sauce. And I'm thinking of, I, I came across this recipe today that I did, um, I don't have the program materials ready yet, but they, they'll be up soon. I came across this recipe that I learned from a chef um, at a restaurant in Indiana, and he made a strawberry basil sauce that was really cool. So I'm thinking maybe we'll, that'll be an option. We can do just like regular macerated strawberries, which are just kind of like juicy strawberries. Um, with sugar, or you could do this strawberry basil sauce. That's pretty good. Um, and of course, French toast. You can put whatever type of toppings you like. Also, so I've got a little bit of this butter left. I'm going to save it in a container and put it in my fridge, um, and I'll use it another time. Sometimes too, like if you get um, takeout from an Italian restaurant and they give you bread and you don't use all of it when you eat that particular meal, you can freeze the bread and then thought another day you got the garlic butter already and then it's a an easy little upgrade all right i'm gonna stir my pasta again and i'll bring it over to show you kind of how it's progressing tomato sauce is bubbling a bit the noodles are getting softer everything's cooking down smelling good And then 
for the um, garlic bread, I'm gonna put the, the sheet pan just like this under the broiler. I'll check it in three minutes. Sometimes you just need to wait and see when it looks brown. Um, if you notice one side is, is getting brown and the other isn't, you can take it out and rotate it and put it in the other way. I find sometimes it takes a little time before it starts getting brown and then it goes brown like real quick. So, here. I turned my boiler off. Um, Alexa, set a garlic bread timer for three minutes. All right. So that is going. How's it going over there? I don't want to rush you. Are you are you up for doing um, the salad dressing, or you want to you want me to hang off for a few because I can cut some salad toppings if you're not ready yet. I'm working on the butter still, but okay. I could still listen. Okay. Well, I'll I'll cut up some salad toppings while you do that, and then we'll do the we'll do the dressing after the salad bread comes out of the oven. So like I was saying, at the Italian restaurants that I go to, they do carrots, um, cucumber, which I don't have any, I used all my cucumber last night, and tomatoes, and red onions. So I'm just gonna kind of do some small pieces of carrot. And you, this is a good way to use kind of anything you have hanging out in your fridge. In the produce drawer, like I think I have some cooked beets um like the, you can buy ones that are already kind of roasted for you it's not hard to roast beets it just you have to plan ahead because it takes a little time um and sometimes like with having a kid at home sometimes i'll do uh, salad toppings on a plate and i'll just kind of lay them all out and then i'll let him you know tell him he needs to try at least one of each thing but then i'll kind of let him pick what he wants out of those um, piles so i'm not uh, getting a choice kind of helps make it a little more interesting a lot of times. Uh, or if you're a kid who goes shopping to the grocery store with your parent, you can pick out some things and see what it's like to cook with those, which is pretty fun. So I've got some carrots. I'm going to rinse up some tomatoes. And I have a fun tip for cutting tomatoes. If you have uh, containers like deli containers um, or from to go that have the plastic lids that have like the little lip here, what you can do is the way to quickly cut a bunch of them in half at once. I saw this, I believe it was on Rachel Ray's show a million years ago, and it stuck with me. It's so handy. So the lip is up on the bottom one, so it's kind of cradling them. The lip is going down this time, so I have kind of like a sandwich. And then I'm gonna take my knife, press down a little bit on this top one to hold everything in place, and kind of saw back and forth. And then you have forks for grapes or olives that don't have pits. You have a bunch of perfectly halved tomatoes in like five seconds um, versus tediously Doing that? Your bread time Alexa, done. stop. Alexa, stop. Sorry if I set off anybody else's, if you have one of those at home. I always set a timer with garlic bread because you never know if it's going to be too much. Alexa, set a garlic bread timer for two minutes. I accidentally unpreheated my broiler, so my stick. Your, your, your mic is cutting in and out. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is, that, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. My, Right. Might have been my, my hair ruffling it over there. Um, all right, so we've got some carrots and some tomatoes. And what else do I have? Oh, I have red onion. And let's, before I cut this, I'm going to give the pasta another stir. It's getting a lot softer now. Liquid and the steam are kind of helping to cook them down. Oh, I did want to share if um if you're making this vegan, I have not tried it personally, but um instead of ricotta, I've read that silk and tofu, you can blend that. You might want to put a little garlic powder or something in it to make it taste like 
a little something else, but it'll be nice and creamy. And then you can use um, nutritional yeast instead of Parmesan. It's um, little flakes, like a, a kind of golden colored flake. The stuff is really good on, like sprinkled on popcorn. And it's, it, it's what I think is the closest thing to Parmesan. It's like a little bit uh, nutty. And it has, apparently it's a good source of B vitamins including B12 and provide eight, gram of, eight grams of protein per serving and a serving is a quarter cup. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting ingredient to play around with. So I'm gonna slice some red onion. Just gonna do little thin slices. I'm gonna do too much of this. I usually have like a partial one of this in the fridge. Um, if, if you find raw onion a little too strong and you want to kind of neutralize the flavor a little bit, um, but still use it, you can soak, you can slice them and then soak them. Alexa, stop. You can soak them in a bowl of cold water for 10 to 15 minutes and then drain it and that'll help kind of mellow it out. You could also go for uh, shallots instead. They're a little more mild. So, you can see my, my garlic bread's not quite brown. It's getting a little bit brown, but we're not quite there yet. I'll set, set a garlic bread timer for 90 seconds. Once you get going, I feel like the last little bit, it can creep up on you. So checking it a little bit more often. Um, if you're not multitasking, you can watch it. All right. That's good for salad toppings for this. And then we're going to make the balsamic vinaigrette. Um, again, you can make this in advance if you want. Um, it holds up well in the fridge for a few days. So I'm just going to grab a bowl. And I'm going to add all the ingredients that are listed here except for the oil first. So a quarter cup of balsamic. smelling garlic bread, so I'm going to check just to make sure. Sometimes if you smell it, that might mean it's brown enough. Alexa, stop. See, in just those 90 seconds, you got nice and toasty. So these are looking good. I'm going to set them to the side. I personally like the ones that get a little extra crispy. Um, they're not for everybody, but those are kind of my favorites. So, um, a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna pour it into a big bowl. Or not a big bowl, it can be like a medium bowl. You just need enough room to waste. Oh, Your garlic that. bread time. Alexa, done. stop. Alexa, stop. She's very helpful for having multiple um, timers going at the same time. I think that was the other one with like a pasta timer. So, My noodles are cooked. If they're looking a little bit stiff after the 20 minutes, I might need just a couple more. You could take one um, out very carefully, either with tongs or a fork, and just test it and see if it's cooked through. But I'll show you quickly what it looks like. I think it's nice and saucy here. So what I'm gonna do now that this is out of the oven, I mean, off of the stove top and the pasta is cooked, I'm gonna stir in um, a quarter cup of Parmesan. I'm not measuring exactly, but about a quarter cup. And stir that in. And the pasta. And then we're going to dot some cheese on top. Kat just came into the kitchen. She thinks she's getting some, but she is definitely not. Um, so for this, you need eight ounces of ricotta. These containers are 16. So if you were, if you were gonna make this twice, you would have half of the pasta, half of the ricotta, then you could just use what's left for the next batch. These ones have a pull tab and I feel like it always breaks right off. So I'm gonna cut it. And I'm just gonna take a spoon. Um, I'm sure my pasta is kind of in an even layer. I'm just gonna dollop little spoonfuls around the edges. 
between them in the middle. So I use about half of the container. And I'm not gonna lie, when I heat up leftovers, I'll sometimes add a little bit of extra ricotta on top, just because I like the, um, the cool cheese on top of the hot pasta. It's kind of nice. So it doesn't have to be anything special or perfect or equally placed, just dab it around there. And I'll often, um, it often needs a little bit more salt. So I'll sprinkle some salt and pepper over the top. And when you're, when you're eating it, depending on how much Parmesan you add on top, and you might want to add a little bit more salt. Um, if it feels like it's missing something, it's usually salt. So I'm just cracking some pepper and then I'm going to put the lid back on the top. And I'm going to put this back onto I'm going to let this sit to heat off for five minutes. Um, and that's the steam from having the lid on top will kind of melt the ricotta down into pools. So we'll just check on it when we're done with our dressing. So in our bowl, we've got a quarter cup of balsamic, a teaspoon of dried parsley, Um, a half teaspoon of dried basil. Again, if you wanted to use an Italian seasoning mix instead, you could just, you know, um, do like two teaspoons to all of that instead of doing separate parsley, basil, oregano, and garlic powder. Um, so one teaspoon of parsley, one half of basil, a quarter of um, dried oregano, and then I put an eighth. Sometimes that's hard to measure. You could just do a little pinch or you could take a quarter teaspoon and just fill half of it of garlic powder. A little bit in there. A teaspoon of Dijon mustard. This and the yogurt are kind of what helps it emulsifying it nice and creamy. I always like to shake the mustard first and then I, oh, I squeeze it a little over the sink because you've ever got that weird mustard water stuff and it's just like especially if you have like a hot dog or something and it gets all over the bread and it's just kind of sad so I usually will sacrifice a tiny bit to the sink to make sure I don't get the, the mustard water <laughs> so one teaspoon of Dijon and then a teaspoon of granulated sugar has a little bit of sweetness it works really well with the balsamic so like if you've ever had um, a salad that's got balsamic and strawberries, it works really nicely together. A teaspoon of sugar. And then we'll add three tablespoons of Greek yogurt. And for Jojo, if you're still there, if you have, if you want a way to remember what's bigger, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, the way I remember it is a table is a lot bigger than a cup of tea. So the teaspoons are the little ones and the tablespoons are the bigger ones. Um, and if you're really curious about it, three teaspoons equals a tablespoon. So I'm not great with math, but in the kitchen I'm pretty good with it. Um, so three tablespoons of plain Greek yogurt. <laughs> when you're, if you're buying Greek yogurt, sometimes vanilla looks strikingly similar to plain. So vanilla yogurt would not be very good in here. So just watch the labels. I've been making yogurt in my Instant Pot for a while, so I, I strain, you can strain the extra liquid out and make a Greek style with it, which is pretty cool. We eat a ton of yogurt in this house. All right, almost done. It seems like a lot of things, but it's mostly stuff that you have in the pantry or the fridge, um, usually. Gonna add a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and, and I put an eighth teaspoon of fresh black pepper, but you know, just a couple turns is fine. Salt. And pepper. And then I'm gonna whisk this part of it together and then we'll stream the olive oil in after. We're just whisking it until it's 
smooth. The yogurt sometimes takes a minute to break up. And then we're gonna measure out a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, which let's see. This one. You can use regular olive oil if you don't have extra virgin. That's fine. There's enough flavor going on in here that it'll make a difference. And we'll make a huge difference. So half a cup. This um, dressing is also great for, I have a recipe on my website for, um, I use it in an, an antipasto pasta salad. So it's pasta salads are cold with like little bits of mozzarella and salami and stuff. Um, it's really good for that. I'm gonna slowly drizzle the olive oil while I'm whisking. And that'll help it emulsify and come together and be a nice, creamy, delicious dressing. Like I said, if you happen to have pizza or bread, dipping it in the sauce and in the dressing is pretty good. You can see like where it starts pouring in, it's separated, but as soon as you start whisking it, it comes together and it's nice and creamy. Okay, so that is all there is for the dressing. And it's probably been almost five minutes since close the lid on the pasta. So I'm just gonna rinse off some basil. Um, to, I like to wait until the end to either tear the leaves or you can slice them with a knife if you want to. If you do it too far in advance, they'll uh, start to kind of turn brown. They'll still taste good, but they won't, they won't look quite as nice. So, although I had to send my husband to the store. I didn't have any basil at Stop and Shop and he found some and it's, looking the greatest, but it'll be warm soon and we'll have some herbs outside. So. I think that is it for this one. move this to the side. Pull the lid off. So Tetris in the kitchen, it is very small. The name of my website is not, it's not a joke if you have a very tiny kitchen, but I make it work. So you can kind of see I've got like pools of ricotta cheese now. And then I'm just gonna tear, if the leaves are small enough, you can leave the bowl, just tear a couple over the top. You don't have to add this either. It's, it, it'll have plenty of flavor without. And then to serve it, I'm gonna, I've got a pasta bowl. I'm gonna do serving of this. Nice scoop. At least maybe a scoop and a half. And then I'm gonna tuck a little garlic bread in there. Side. It's nice, like dunked kind of in the sauce. Oh, I like it. Um, and then I'll do a little salad. I've got somewhere. Where did I put it? Not far in here. Do you? I'm curious if Jojo eats salad. If he's into any type of greens. My son Ian has started. He'll eat some salads now. It's pretty nice. He um, went shopping with me, like you said. That really mm -hmm. So he picked out some arugula. Yeah. Oh, are you having arugula? Yeah, I've got baby arugula. You got the same same one? Oh yeah. Very good. Yeah, he, that helps sometimes. Um, I think take, so. Especially once and once farmers market season is around, if you if you enjoy the farmers market or if you have one nearby, um, it's kind of nice to. Sometimes you can find an ingredient that you're not familiar with, and you can ask the person at the stand, like, "Hey, like, how would you use this?" And then give you some ideas. Nice. Oh yeah, that's a good idea to ask them. Yes, yeah. yeah, so there can be some kind of weird ingredients that you might not be familiar with otherwise. Uh, so that is all for this. It's a whole meal and bonus points for kids helping in the kitchen. And if you ever need an idea to do while something is simmering on the oven, one of my favorite things for kids to help with is to help set the table, put the plates out or a napkin. That's super helpful. Um, 
And then after dinner, if you can help bring them back into the kitchen. And then one day you'll just be cooking a whole meal on your own. Come on, um, you just sure <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you everybody for joining. And I'll put the events uh, page link in there again. Like I said, I'll be back with the Rye Library on April 20th, breakfast for dinner. We're also gonna do in May, we have a Middle Eastern patouche salad with some homemade pita chips. And then in June, we're making Vietnamese fresh spring rolls with shrimp and peanut sauce. Very, all, all very good. All of these are kid approved. So, I mean, my kid, he's adventurous in some ways. He won't touch potatoes though. So, <laughs> um, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner. Thank oh, you. and if you, if you happen to take a picture, you can either send it to me or if you're on social media, I'm happy to play with it. I'd love to see. Um, and it's nice having dinner with you from afar. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you, Laurie. And I'm glad we troubled, uh, yeah. we figured out Charlene's uh, screen issue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank yes. you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.